Hello. So I've been using Adobe Lightroom since the very beginning, since version one. And that was about 15 years ago. And I was a pretty early adopter of Adobe Lightroom at the time. Now, during that time, I've processed, you know, maybe hundreds of thousands of pictures through the software. And while I would never claim to be a technical expert, I do know how to efficiently and quickly process my shoots and get them out the door as quickly as I can, because I don't want to be spending any more time in front of these monitors than I absolutely have to. Now, part of my workflow is to use keystrokes on the keyboard. I'm just going to talk today about some of the, 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 the keystrokes that I use on a daily basis and talk about why I use them and how I use them in my workflow. And, you know, I really hope there's something here that helps you navigate your way around Lightroom a little bit easier. By the way, subscribe because I'm at 2,900 subscribers, which I cannot believe. So thank you if you have already subscribed, but I'd love to get to 3,000 by the new year. So, you know, please hit the button and leave me a comment if you have anything to add or any questions. I love our community in the comments of people kind of reach out and it's lovely to, you know, kind of start conversations. And I think it's always really nice for people who are watching the video to read through the comments and get a kind of community feel of what other people are doing. So, you know, it's always cool. Um, right, so here we go, let's jump into the computer. Okay, so here we are in the grid library module of Lightroom, and this is kind of the basic default place I always come back to. And I refer to this as kind of my, it's like going back to the darkroom days. This is like laying out your negatives on the, on the, on the light box in the darkroom and working out which ones are your best ones and which ones you wanna keep. And the first button I wanna show you is the tab button. The tab button, brings in the side panels and takes them away. And it's really useful pretty much wherever you are in Lightroom for doing that. The next button that I wanna show you is the G button. And the G button brings you back to this view, so to this library view. So wherever you are, let's say you've gone off into the develop module because you wanna um, brighten things up to this picture or darken them down or whatever you wanna do. But then you wanna get back to the, your whole shoot, you wanna get back to the kind of, <laughs> your negatives lying on the darkroom uh, light box, G button takes you back to that. And I use that all of the time. It's probably my most used button. Okay, so the next button that I want to show you is the C button. And um, what that does is it enables you to compare two pictures side by side and have a certain amount of control. So let's say we want to look at these two pictures and we want to work out which one we like the best. Um, the C button takes us to that comparison and we can then zoom in on the pictures to check for sharpness, things like that. So this is really useful if you've sort of got two portraits or two pictures that are very similar that you're trying to compare. Uh, G takes us back to uh, the grid mode and let's say we want to actually add in another picture to compare as well and then we can use the N button. The N button takes us to survey which means that we can look at a wider selection of pictures a little bit bigger and make our decisions over which ones we might want to keep or not. The G button takes us back down to um, our grid view again. All of the time the T button brings and closes our toolbar at the bottom, which means you've got a lot of different options down there. So T is very good to know about as well. Okay, the next button that I wanna show you about is the rename button. Now, let's say we want to rename this picture for whatever reason. Now, I don't always uh, think this is the best thing to do because it will rename your, file, your, your raw file, but it can be useful sometimes. And it's the F2 button. The F2 button stops you having to scroll through a hundred different menus. You just hit the F2 button and you can then type in your uh, the new custom name that you want. You can do that on one picture or the whole shoot if you wish. Um, the next button I'm going to show you is the B button, and B takes you to takes the picture that you're you 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 have highlighted straight to your quick collection. So this is really useful if you're trying to build a, a sort of portfolio. At, from lots of different shoots and you want to you, you know you want to maybe pick out your 10 best pictures over the whole year then you can use quick collection as a way of doing that and just hitting b adds the picture to quick collection and then you come over here onto the side and you can see that our quick collection has actually got two pictures in there they are in the quick collection so b takes you there okay um let's just get back to our original file folder so the next thing that I'm going to do is talk you through the develop module. So now we're, we're, we've decided which pictures we want to keep and we are going to use the D button to take us to develop. It's kind of obvious, um, but it just stops you having to move the mouse around so much. Once you're in D, uh, in develop, um, you can use the I key to toggle this information up here, which is your, um, you can either have it off or the I button will toggle between the information, which shows you the date and time that the picture's taken or the settings that you've used for that particular photograph. 
very useful. The next thing that I'm going to show you is the R button. Now the R button takes you into the crop mode. Now I crop nearly all of my pictures, so I use the R, the R button all, all of the time. And within the oh, that enables you to sort of tweak your pictures and do which whatever you want to do with the crop. But within the within the crop um, box, there are also a couple of um, of keystrokes that are really useful. The first being O, and what O does is toggle between the overlays. And there's a whole bunch of different um, uh, different options here that can be used for different things. But it can be really useful to toggle between them depending on what it is that you're trying to achieve. And the O button enables you to kind of flash through those things. Um, let's just bring that back to the middle one. The next thing that is really useful in the in the um, crop option is X and what that does is enable us to it kind of locks the aspect but if you wanted to let's say add a headshot of one of these fellows to your portfolio to your to your collection of pictures you can hit X and it will change the aspect from portrait to landscape and that can be a really useful way of making sure that the sort of flow of the shoot is um, it, it is steady because the the crop ratio will be the same from each picture which a lot of my clients in particular kind of like that kind of thing the next button that i'm going to show you is a and a toggles this little lock here so if you want to do a crop that is let's say a skinny panoramic by clicking x it unlocks this and enables you to have kind of free control over your over your um, crop so it's very useful r takes us back there reset and a will toggle back and forth between those two things Okay, that's cr crop dealt with. Okay, so the next thing I want to show is some local area adjustments. And let's look at this picture. Let's go into D mode. And what I want to do is to darken down the sky and then lighten up the foreground a little bit just for demonstration purposes. The new version of Adobe Lightroom is a little bit complicated because you then have to sort of create new masks using this button. And it can get a little bit kind of... Um, I don't know, complicated, but I tend to use just keystrokes. So M brings us up with the graduation tool, which I love, the graduation tool. I really love the brutality of it. Let's darken that sky right down. And just for demonstration purposes, that's a bit much. And let's say we then want to use our brush tool to go in and lighten up the foreground. We can use K. K does that for us straight away. We don't need to add new masks or anything. It's just automatic. And it will then, we can dial in some plus exposure there and we can paint in the light just like back in the darkroom i like using these tools just like i did in the darkroom using my hands to darken down the sky and then using my fingers or a dodger to kind of lighten up different areas so it kind of goes right back to the beginning really i'm not really into all of this artificial intelligence select sky stuff or select subjects i think it just looks a bit fake i just quite like kind of burning stuff down in a brutal manner um okay so the next i'm just going to go back to the library view the next tool that i'm going to show you is the q button and q button allows us to go in and select our dust dusting spot a dusting tool and that's very cool because if we use that in combination with the z tool to zoom in we can work our way around the file and look for dust spots or oh, there's one and then we can use our q button to just zap those and then they're gone and that's finished okay so finally Let's look at this picture again and let's go in and add a bit more brutality to it because I just want to kind of really build this up as much as I can, this picture, so it's over-processed in the most absurd fashion. And what I'm then going to do is show that the um, Y tool will show you the before and after. So we can go into, into the Y button, takes us, this was the beginning picture that we started with, and this is our finished picture after we've done some post-production to it. If we use this in combination with the tabs button to make the side panels go away, then we can see uh, quite clearly um, the difference. It's really nice to see how your post-production has actually been progressing throughout the pictures. And the last tool that I'll leave you with is, let's say we finally decide that this is the picture that we absolutely like, and this is kind of going to be the front page of our new website. And we want to see it, it, how it looks against black or grey, and the L button en enables us to toggle through those. So you can see your finished picture in all of its glory against grey or black. It effectively turns the lights out, or you can come back to white. So there we are. There's a whole bunch of different keystrokes for you to try out. I would recommend not trying to learn them all at once. I would recommend trying to learn. You probably know some of them already. I hope there's been some here that may help you navigate your way around Lightroom. Thank you very much for watching and please do leave me a comment and subscribe if you like this kind of content. Thank you very much and goodbye.